You're listening to Make It Possible Ukraine Volunteer Heroes Stories, the podcast about volunteers who have made a difference in Ukraine. Together, we can make it possible for people in Ukraine. Welcome to today's episode of our Volunteer Heroes Stories. I'm excited to introduce Jared, a remarkable volunteer from Tampa Bay, Florida. Jared has dedicated significant time and effort to helping others, both locally and internationally. Jared's volunteer journey took him to the Philippines, where he spent a month working with the street children. His dedication didn't stop there. He was fortunate to visit them again next year and continue helping them out. More recently, Jared has been actively involved in Ukraine. He was helping to deliver pizza to internally displaced people in schools around the country. And also, he was a member of a Ukrainian lacrosse team, uh, showcasing his commitment to the community in different ways. We're thrilled to have Jared here to share his inspiring stories and experiences. Welcome, Jared. Thank you. Uh, it's, you? Good, it's good to be here. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing well, doing well. I uh, got back uh, from Rivna uh, two days ago, so uh, good to be back in Lviv and a little, little bit nicer city than Rivna, but, uh, but uh, I'm excited to be back and uh, continuing to volunteer. Jared is helping out in different places in Ukraine, and now currently we're located in Lviv. It's mid-July. It's been two and a half years of war in Ukraine, unfortunately, but we're so, so lucky and fortunate to have people like Jared coming to Ukraine and helping so many different um, organizations. So I wanted to ask you, like, uh, how did you end up in Ukraine? How did you start volunteering in general? Tell us more about your volunteering journey. Um, yeah, so um, I have a really personal close connection to Ukraine. Uh, my grandfather uh, was originally from Kharkiv, uh, Ukraine. Wow. And um, uh, during World War II, like many, many families, he was forced from his home and... Uh, was in work camp in Poland. Uh, no way. Yes, and then he ended up uh, in um, Germany, uh, like towards the end of the war, because my great grandfather had uh, managerial skills, so they thought his his effort would be <laughs> more used in trying to, uh, you know, make weapons for the German army. Not that they really had any choice, and. Um, uh, post World War II, uh, he had opportunity to come to the U.S. with nothing. Um, his, uh, him, and his, uh, and my great grandfather, and um, you know, uh, now 70 years later, uh, I'm you know first member of my family to be back since uh, they left in 1943. That's incredible! And, what an incredible uh, story! Yeah, um, um, a lot of people like him being from Kharkiv, like. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, it's close to the Russian border. Oh, he must be like, have Russian connections, this type of thing. But his, f uh, to the day he died, his most cherished day was the day that Ukraine got his independence. That's amazing. Yeah. And again, it's been so many years since then. That's again what Ukrainian people are fighting for. Mm -hmm. That would be the happiest day of our current lives of Ukrainians. That's mm -hmm. awesome. What an inspiring story. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing yeah. it. Thank you for being here. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, I always share that uh, Ukrainian people are, um, they have such a sense of freedom and and um, hope for democracy and f uh, a better life that uh, uh, it's so inspiring. And a lot of Ukrainians are so surprised by this because like, they're like, why does an American care so much about Ukraine? And uh, they don't understand what the inspiration they are to the world. Because I think it's very similar also what America is standing for, for mm -hmm. freedom, for ability to have anything you want in the life yeah. and to make that possible for yeah. yourself. So I think yeah. that's what Ukraine is fighting, yeah. fighting for as well. Yeah, my that's just my grandfather, one of my biggest inspirations, because when he came here with nothing, mm -hmm. he put himself through university and then started his own business, worked like 90 hours a week and, uh, you know, was able to be middle class and coming from absolutely nothing to having, you know, a family and a steady home. Uh, That's incredible. You know, it's the American dream kind of thing. You and know, here so. he has you yeah. doing very important, very helpful things yeah. now. That's very inspiring. He did yeah. a good job. Yes. Yeah. He has, great. Yes. That's awesome. 
But uh, based on what you told me and what I know about you, you started volunteering long time ago. Yeah. And you've been doing it around the world and locally. So tell yeah. us more about, like, how did you decide to do it? Yeah, I mean, I started, you know, my... My dad's a philanthropic-based financial planner, so he works a lot with charities. So, like, that's how I kind of first got involved. Um, And then um, during when my father, my grandfather passed away, I felt this extreme urge to come back to Ukraine and to be the first person to stop in my family since 1943 to come back here. And in 2019, I um, I came with... uh, I reached out with the Ukrainian lacrosse team and an organization called FCA, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, which helps uh, spread the Bible, but also sport, like through many different countries, Ukraine, Philippines. That's um, and um, I was able to raise money um, to come here in 2019. And I spent 10 days in Ukraine. And ever since then, um, like, it wasn't even just about obviously being in Ukraine. It was It was a very touching time for me. But... Um, being with the kids, helping them like learn lacrosse and how much just their enjoyment. Um, and then um, after I graduated for my master's, I um, joined, uh, I helped with an organization called Humanility in the Philippines, which I worked at a, a shelter for street children. That's beautiful. And uh, I spent a month there. I can't say this was the easiest time of my life. A lot of power outages, had to shower with out of a bucket, like cold water, wow. but uh, eating rice for three meals a day, <laughs> not a little different <laughs> for a diet. But um, um, it was, you know, um, like now and even then, like, is just infectious and amazing on these like kids that are they have such you know rough time like things that kids should never go through, um, like for the Philippines for example there was kids that were coming from human trafficking from the streets where there even instances where their parents like left them like just gave up on them at ten years old you know wow. um, and these kids always found a reason to smile and they were just so happy for you know, just to, to be alive and to enjoy life. And uh, it kind of puts everything that I complain about into perspective. Like, totally. uh, you know, we say first world problems, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, there's all, you always have issues, but um, if these kids can find a reason to smile every day, um, then, you know, what, what what am I complaining about? What Putting things into perspective and Ever since then, it's just been infectious. I I always want to help out when I can. Do you think everybody should volunteer to some extent? Oh, of course. Um, One of the things I always think of, like, for universities, especially in America, that they should spend, um, they should have a requirement of, like, to spend a month or, like, two weeks Mm -hmm. into a different country around the world. Volunteering. uh, Volunteering. Wow, that's a great idea. I like uh, that. Because... It puts everything into perspective. You know, you put your life into perspective. You become more humble and more grateful for the things you have. And um, it also makes you have, like, a worldview. Like, to understand that everything's, like, while America's not perfect, like, there's it's a very comfortable life. And, I mean, you know, you've (laughs) lived there for a couple couple years, so you you understand. But uh, comparative to places that, you know, they're just figuring out where their next meal is coming from or, yeah. you know, these these types of things. It's um, it's really rewarding. It's just a, it's a education of the soul, I would call it, you know. I agree with you. Yeah. Me, for me, too, when I lived in the um, U.S. and I had very comfortable life, and uh, when you see the world or you, or you see that there's, it can be different mm-hmm. elsewhere, then it um, gives you this uh, um, willing to help other people because mm-hmm. you have a great life and like you want other people to have mm-hmm. a great life. So I think that's the beauty of United States that they give you this power of optimistic and you want to help other, other people. And I think that's why U.S. is helping Ukraine those days as mm-hmm. that much because they mm-hmm. want to help out. They believe in the values we're fighting for right yeah. now, which is freedom and a better life yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So, again, thank you personally and United States, of course, every country <laughs> for all the help. Yeah. I don't know. We probably wouldn't be sitting here in Lviv right now if it wasn't for all this no, help, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very discussed topic in the United <laughs> States. But um, it's um, – they, they have to understand, like, um, even, um, like, Zelensky and all of them, like – 
I mean, he has like super, you know, majority of the house and everything, and he he you know he wants to set the standard of democracy. I mean, he could do the same thing like they're doing in Hungary, or you know, like Vladimir Putin suddenly a president, <laughs> but uh, you know, he wants to set the standard of. A democracy where it's voted by the people that not no person has too much power and uh, you know uh, Ukraine is a very young nation in yeah. a way but it'll but it'll be grow. You mentioned there's actually a lot of different opinions and conversation mm-hmm. and discussions over yeah. Ukraine in United States. Yeah. But don't you think those people will think differently in say they actually would come to Ukraine? Of course. That's of what course. I always think. Of course. Because it's far away, you can't relate as much because mm-hmm. you live your own life. But when you see it, when you see the destruction, when you see how it influences mm-hmm. every single person here, yeah. even me, like for me, I was like, I'm American Ukrainian and like I work still have my business in US, but I'm currently in Ukraine physically. Mm-hmm. And it influences me so much. Like I worry so much about things. I hear sirens all the time. Mm-hmm. So when you're here, you actually feel like that this is not okay. Yeah. This should not be happening. Happening. Yeah. So I think if those some people who don't agree with helping Ukraine actual experiences what people mm-hmm. experience here, even in Lviv, which is mm-hmm. far, far from front lines, mm-hmm. I don't even know, like, it's probably terrible, yeah. closer. But I think that would change their mind. Yeah. And I, I, I think um, they have to understand the values of Ukraine. And they also have to understand Ukraine is a, a young nation and it will be growing. Yeah, and, that uh, is true too. It has, like, um, I, I, always, I always think that, you know, uh, Ukraine during, you know, Zelensky is kind of like the first to kind of start getting away from this Russian connection and um, to kind of be, it's not as controlled by outside money that I know the corruption is like the, a lot of people discuss about, but any any country that's starting off has this experience of corruption, of I course, think so too. and it just takes It takes, takes time. time. And then you lobby in some corruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> not, it's okay. Not saying the U.S. were like, U.S. were not corrupt at all. You yeah, know, but we really have lobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have uh, regulated corruption, right? Yeah, lobbying that's, that's what they call it <laughs> mega yeah. donors yeah but there is still a lot of work needs to be done in ukraine that we are here already to do mm-hmm. we are ready here to do it and improve it so we are thankful for our partners and of course volunteers mm-hmm. so i wonder i have a question for you it's like how was yeah. your volunteering experience in ukraine what have you noticed what was like uh, good memories something good you noticed and some like maybe sad things you noticed um, tell me more about emotions yeah um so You know, I, I've been here for almost two months now. So, um, you know, I, I, the kind of background to this uh, for everybody listening is that uh, I, I quit quit my job and uh, I kind of saw this as an opportunity to spend this time. I'm still looking for jobs uh, while I'm uh, online, but, you know, it's going to be, re- you know, it's all online anyway. So I was taking this opportunity to come help because um, a lot of my teammates, for example, for the Ukrainian lacrosse national team are fighting and they're doing all these things. And. Uh, I just want to contribute. And kind of the good things I've seen and the amazing things is um, just how, like like we talked before, like on how people are just living day by day and they're happy to enjoy the day. And um, even in, uh, I went to Kiev. I had a chance to go visit Kiev uh, this past week. And, uh, you know, everything, people are still living day to day. They, they're still trying to get through. And... Um, It's just inspiring, you know. They there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to give up. There's a lot of reasons to not go forward. There's right. a lot of reasons of people, you know. Hey, you should leave Ukraine. Ukraine's not safe. All those, you know, these kinds of things, these kinds of ideals. Um, but uh, you know, these people can keep going, keep pushing forward. Uh, they keep spurring the economy to keep going. So these these types of things are, um, you know, it's beautiful. And uh, one, I guess, sad thing. Um, You know, um, seeing seeing the okay. Well, one story actually, this comes to mind. Um, we, when I was with serving pizza to uh, the uh, IDPs, was that you know some of the living conditions that they're in. Um, I yeah, I mean that's it's so tough. Um, we try to give a family um, some frozen pizzas that they could take extra, and um, they. They're like, we only have one stovetop. You know, this is all they have to cook food. And they're a family of five. And uh, yeah. it's not, it, it's, it's you know, not great. You know, this is just the effects of war. I mean, these people are from the Far East. And, 
but again, they're still trying to push every day. That there, you know, was a group of like three or four kids that uh, were part of this family that uh, you know th- there's. They were sad about it, but you know they're still going to continue to push, and you know that hopefully one day that they can get back to their home um, and rebuild and re, you know, to flourish again. You know, to be. I think it's really inspiring to see that. Yeah. Yes, because compared to like all the problems we have in our lives when we live in the U.S., right? We like mm-hmm. what is the problems we have? I don't know. High rent. <laughs> High rent all the time. Something like yeah, that. So yeah. You like didn't get a bonus or whatever yeah, it like, is. Yeah. You're late somewhere, but it's like people like having like really big issues and they're still keeping up and they're yeah. still staying positive and believing in a bright future mm-hmm. ahead of them. But I think also it's because of people like you, mm-hmm. because like, for example, now in Lviv, you walk around and you see so many like English, you see English language yeah, and yeah. you see foreigners. Yeah. And for us, for Ukrainians, it gives us hope. First of all, that people didn't forget about us. And mm-hmm. second of all, is that everything going to be OK. Mm-hmm. And maybe that family that you saw because of you, they were like okay he's American person that he cares will be okay so thank you I think this means a lot to us yeah. even your presence here yeah yeah and I, I think um, you know the messages to Ukraine is just keep going like awesome. uh, there's there's gonna start there's gonna be start more and more so I think even the longer we go the longer they push I mean I know Russia is already very demoralized by this, and financially as well. There's, you know, they're feeling the tariffs and types of things that we have against them. And uh, um, I think I'm, you know, I pray every day that this war ends very soon. And um, I think um, what Ukraine is doing is very inspiring. I mean, nobody, nobody would in a in all the military people would think that Ukraine would have been able to even fend off Russia during the first couple of days of invasion, even before like U.S. support, right? I think they didn't realize who Ukrainians are. Yeah, we're very like um, we would not. We're not. What is that? Not following anybody rules. Mm-hmm. We're like very pro yeah. democracy mm-hmm. and freedom. So I think what Russians underestimated is. Um, just the nations, the way the nation yeah. are. Like, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, we're not Russians that will be following somebody's, even president's rule and not doing anything. Yeah. We had so many, like Maidan, we would go mm-hmm. to the square, we would do against things. So uh, Ukrainians, you can't, yeah, you can't really control that nation. It's mm-hmm. very, like, since all our history, we always were very, uh, we were under different countries all the time, pretty much, but we always wanted to have a freedom, and we always were fighting mm-hmm. against all these nations that were coming yes, our, yeah. our way. Yeah. So I think that's an un- uh, underestimation. Yeah. Uh, like, I've heard so many older people, in, like, especially Western Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like, Every single person. Maybe there is some very, very small support on Eastern Ukraine. Very small. But in Western Ukraine, I mean, if they come this way, it would be just very bad for them. Yeah. Because people are here are very against anything Russian. Yeah. Uh, but a- anyways, but without American support, without support of other countries, of course, we would not be where we are right now. That would be not possible. Yeah. So that's a big but, deal. But even, this is said, like, even Ukraine being able to defend it off bef- without, like, before the aid even came, you know, before this Western aid even came, that it was amazing. Um, you know, the, the crazy part was that I stayed in Irpin, uh, you did? Yes, when I was here last. So it's like a couple kilometers from Kiev. Yeah. And they got to Irpin. Correct. So um, all the buildings, uh, like uh, in the morning, I'd run, like do a run around the city. And many of the buildings, it was very surreal. So uh, many of the buildings that are <laughs> Jared, there. Jared, yeah. I'm worried about you right now as yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, it's very surreal that um, because the buildings that I was r- running around, they were all, you know, th- this was where... The, a lot of the this is where a lot of the tanks were stopped. So Irpin was like kind of half the big, half, yeah. It was um, it was a big battleground for. This is where they got to. So, um, uh, but it's crazy that the you know a lot of the buildings were yeah because destroyed you know and, the place. I think yeah. the craziest is where actually you know the place, and now it looks different mm-hmm. because of all these things. So for yeah. you, it really affects you personally this yeah. way compared to just watching on you some mm-hmm. photo of something you've mm-hmm. never been before. Yeah, that's why. So, but. You know, I'll, I'll say this too uh, about the volunteering. Let's <laughs> get back to the volunteering. But um, 
the 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 effects on volunteering I, I i even say this selfishly is that it's it's always good for the soul um they say psych psychologically like in psychology the happiest you are is when you're helping others i agree with you and i think that's that's really good. so if you want to even think of it as a selfish way that uh that it brings it, it'll bring you happiness doing stuff for others is what human being a human is all about the so compassion do you think you're happy right now of course by doing what do you do yes awesome. i mean i you know outside of the you know eight hours a day sometimes you get the power outages you know? <laughs> and the air raid sirens yeah, and, and stuff sirens, but you know the this um you know lviv is the most relatively safest city yes. in in ukraine so um it doesn't bother me too much and um you know people can live day by day even in Kharkiv That's all true. the way in the so east many you know do that. you yeah. know who am i to <laughs> really you know uh complain about this and they obviously have much more you know difficult you know time and they have to get into shelters and this in Lviv you know it's less of a threat um but it it's amazing i i uh I can't um it's it's amazing always to see that you know human compassion and human generosity to help others you know I I think uh make it possible is so important um because um I think I 100% believe after the war that there will be a lot more foreign investment into Ukraine um especially the farms and then you were talking about some of the cities like I I would buy a property in Odessa right now because I don't think this will be <laughs> like cheaper after the war like any more yeah, yeah because good point um uh because it'll once it's safe and the borders are secure and potentially if NATO or the EU you know it joins the Ukraine joins the EU or when it joins the EU um this will just spur investment and so people too. to come in and um teaching the English language cuz all these companies are starting to become uh almost english standard i mean i have a friend that works for in germany and he's now they have to write all their emails in english because they want a standard across all all the all the the whole company so um it's kind of becoming the international language and um it's so important i i tell i told even the kids um this last week when i was uh running a camp with for the lacrosse in in kiev um I was talking about the kids on how important it is for them to learn English because it'll just increase your opportunities like in life to for jobs and these types of things like um especially with for you know again foreign direct investment going to come in it's I think it's going to be so important for their personal development and personal growth and um it it'll be amazing in a couple of years when you see somebody that you taught English come back and they're I like, like that. I have this job and I would never gotten it if you oh, didn't help awesome. me learn English and um you you'll you'll find you know I'm sure now because you you're, you're you know you just started the charity it's like you're kind of getting through the bumps and roads and kind of mm. organizing but uh in a couple of years it's going to start rewarding uh, for example like um when I volunteered in the Philippines, you know, they they had those kids since, you know, probably seven some of them seven to eight years and now they're sending their first ones off to college. That's awesome. And like these the kids that they probably either, you know, be dead or they would uh yeah, I'm sorry. In, I mean, I'm, I mean, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but That's yeah, okay. it's a reality, but um or, you know, they'd be on the streets, you know, some of them were picking garbage. It's like and now they have an opportunity to send them to college and university and same thing with you with i'm sure like some of you be like i would never had a chance to go either some of them would probably have a chance to study in the US if and you know they can't study in the US unless they don't know english you know some they they do all those interviews in english so they have to have some proficiency in english That's so right. and i'm sure in a couple of years it's going to be so rewarding and I believe so too yeah. uh for now when you do something related to non-profit right mm-hmm. it's really hard to measure the result because when you work in businesses you see result is by profit or yeah, other sales, things yeah. and here it's like for me it's always really hard i was like do we do it right is it like is it re- even helping anybody because it's hard it's, it might take years and then somebody gets back to you mm-hmm. and then you understand but for me because i've been doing it for two and a half years yeah. it's enough period to see the difference in progress in kids mm-hmm. so some older kids were with me for two and a half years 
and I see a difference. I see the difference in their happiness level and ability to do something forward. Mm -hmm. And of course, English level for sure. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good. And for me also, another thing, I was really inspired by uh, Singapore, the way they did it. Uh, so like 50 years ago, it was like nothing there. No investment, yes, nothing. Course, yeah. And then eventually the government came in and they changed the poli their politics was so part of their politics. Uh, what they did, they were uh, they did um, they made English mandatory and probably they, they did it like the only one la mm -hmm. only language they all spoke. They did so, yeah, English and man Mandarin. Yes, yeah. so it's like everybody like I was in Singapore last year and everybody speaks perfect English. It's just crazy. And it's it's crazy. Yes. And even <laughs> they spoke they speak to their kids. Yes. Like they speak like you yeah. can see somebody from Singapore yeah. and they speak in their household mm -hmm. in English because that's the politics they had. And so what government knew is that when investment comes, we need to make sure we have uh, people that are ready for to do the job. Yeah. So they did like a big emphasis on eleven. English and also education, of course, yeah. and it helps them. So for me, I believe that will also help yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. And we're doing a smaller part, but who knows? Sometimes you think it's smaller, but yeah. it's actually uh, can impact so many people well, because this each kid will impact somebody else as well. So actually, the difference we're making yeah. might be much bigger than we think it is. Yeah, some of the Ukrainians I talked to, um, they said they they have English in school, but they said it's not very like it, it needs to it's be all improved. Right. It's yeah, all like right. it needs to improve. Yeah, I used to have tutors all the time, but not everybody has ability to have tutors. Mm -hmm. So that's where you actually can learn and speak Correct, and better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was the, only the people who had tutors were the ones who were mm -hmm. kind of able to speak English that's to true. me, and then the ones who just did it in class. They said it's like uh, yeah, it's all right, it and then you right. forget yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So to end our uh, well, uh, our interview, I want to ask you the last question. Okay. Uh, do you think it's worth coming to Ukraine to volunteer? Would you recommend it to it, anybody? Yes, I mean, of, of course. And um, I think um, if not in Ukraine, if you don't feel as like comfortable, go to Poland. Like there's so many organizations as well in Poland Makes to sense. do so. If you want to feel like if you don't want to hear the air sirens, but even Lviv is is. I mean, I've never I felt very, I felt very safe. I mean, I feel safe in some of the U.S. cities I've been to. <laughs> I hear you. So, I hear you. So, um, and uh, it's. A, I mean, Lviv uh, is a beautiful city and um, um, amazing people, and it's the everybody has been super welcoming and super supportive, and uh, even the. I know the banks, like, if you need to withdraw money, if you say you're a volunteer, they'll waive all the fees. Oh, and wow. Yeah, awesome. so there's um, there's a lot of support to to uh, to help the volunteers and organizations. And um, I think getting involved is always rewarding. I mean, I always say, like, yes, your career, like, you being a CPA or, you know, I'm doing, I do international business, like, this is always, you know, a great part of your story, but the things you'll talk or be most proud about. Totally. For me, like, personally, my my trip to Philippines, I will say this story forever, yes. and it was yes. only a month of my life. I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, one month. Um, and it's something I will cherish till yes. I pass. 100%. And same thing with this, with this trip. You know, it's uh, something I will always say, you know, I took this opportunity to do so. And I always say this, you know, just do it. Don't overthink it because um, like a lot of people get nervous. I have like a friend who, you know, he has a lot of money saved up. He has like all these things. He's like, oh, I'm like, he's been talking about a trip. He's like, I almost convinced him to come to Ukraine. But he, um, but he's like, he's like hesitant. Oh, like I have some work to do, blah, 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 blah. And he has like. I don't know, he was over like two months of six days. Like, I'm, I'm like, just spend two weeks. Like, it, it, let's just do it. Like, you will it will find it the most rewarding experience. And um, I think there's something to travel when you're not only just doing it for vacation. Totally. And um, like here, I have a chance to not only help others, but to see the beautiful city of Lviv and really experience it. Remember, like last time I was only out east, so I get to experience like, you know, this is a lot more European uh, style kind of city. Uh, smaller city, but beautiful with trees and uh, beautiful walkways and these types of things uh, in nature. And uh, so I always say to people is just just take the chance because um, things that you have like work and these types of things will always be there. They will always be there. You will always have work <laughs> when you get back and you know maybe I'm speaking from a US experience but like uh, I'm sure it's even for most European countries um, 
but anyone, um, it's always rewarding and you will always, and you're, when you're writing your story of your life, you will always write a good portion of, of it about the, your experiences volunteering and overseas and this. I mean, yes, vacation is nice, but the, the I don't know, this impact is it's just very rewarding. And uh, I think it just adds just another layer of value and another layer of uh, fulfillment to, uh, you know, what we're doing and what you're doing here. And, um, and as a international volunteer, just to experience different people and different cultures and kind of realize that people aren't too different. You know, people just want to be happy. I people just so. want to be safe. People just, you know, want food on their plate and, you know, they just want to enjoy life, you know, just uh, find a reason to smile. And uh, I, I think that's, you know, me, I've traveled many different places around from Dubai to all over Europe and uh, many different cultures. And, um, you just kind of realize that every everybody just wants to enjoy life and spend time in the moment and um, and to and one of the ways that I think to fulfill life is to help others and that's one of my personal goals is to help as many people as I can for the better. So this is something that drives me as a person. So um, thank you. I mean, I'll, I'll say this as a, a volunteer. You know, this can this stuff can't happen without organizations like yours, without you taking your time and uh, you, like a risk, right? Like setting up an NGO, spending a lot of time setting up charity. It, it, it takes time and it's not like instantly rewarding, you know, as as you're kind of, you know, what, you're two years into this now. Like, as you know, it took time to kind of get things organized and you're starting to build up and, you know, it just over time, it'll get better and better and easier, you know, <laughs> but um, it without people like you that my opportunity to come here and volunteer is impossible thank and you jared yeah compassion. i think it's it's, amazing. it's starting an ngo is not a problem and i'll record another um, podcast on this it's not that hard as you think yeah. but actually like making that shift of mind that you can do so go somewhere and do something for people yeah. like you explain it's not easy it's yeah. just like you have to be in a really good place in life i feel like you have to satisfy all other things yes exactly. right you yeah. have to be like ready to give back yeah. and what you just mentioned it's beyond being inspirational so yeah. if you're still not sure if you want to volunteer or not, I think Jared would convince anybody. I would. Yeah. I was listening to you, and I was like, I want to volunteer, yeah. even if I already yeah. do yeah. that. Yeah. But I was like, I would go whatever he tells yeah. me to go. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Jared. Yeah. Personally, you're a big deal, and what you you're a big. What you're doing here is a big deal for Ukrainian people. Even just seeing you here, it gives us a hope that everything is going to be okay and people care about us. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, of course. Appreciate and, uh, it. Yeah, they should they should know that we all we all we all care. Thank you. We all care. We do feel that, yeah. and especially because you're here. Thank you so much. All right, thank I'll you. I'll see you next year. Yes. <laughs> thank you for listening to our podcast. I hope you enjoyed our amazing volunteer story as much as I did. I truly hope it inspires you to volunteer in Ukraine. We need as much help as we can get, and every effort counts. Check out our Instagram, Make It Possible Ukraine, and our website, makeitpossibleua.org, for information on our current and future programs. If you can, please support our future initiatives financially by donating on our website. Your contribution will help us continue to bring smiles to more kids in Ukraine. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.